Gravagat, uh, Lask and Corla. The uh, Magdalene laundries are perhaps the most powerful symbol of the inhumanity and brutality which formed a part of our society in, in the 20th century. It's almost incomprehensible to my generation and to younger generations that such institutions uh, were allowed to exist. Uh, not only this, the laundry system was actually supported by the state through commercial contracts and most outrageously through society's abandon abandonment of vulnerable citizens for the most dubious of moral reasons. Reading through the testimony and the experiences of survivors, which have been compiled by the Justice for Magdalene Support Group, one cannot but be ashamed uh, of this dark aspect of our collective past. Trapped, abandoned, locked away, and subjected to horrific abuse, the women incarcerated in the Magdalene laundries were modern-day slaves, stripped of inherent rights and deprived of dignity. The 1911 census of the Mercy Laundry in Galway shows women of all ages, all Roman Catholic, and from nearly every county in the country. Their home, such as it was, was Galway, but not by choice. A sculpture was dedicated in 2009 in Galway to the women who endured uh, in the Mercy Laundry. The statue of a woman in institutional drab holding a sheet aloft to symbolize her enforced endless hours of work. A simple but provocative image. The effects on those housed in Mercy are still felt today. Testimonies in the report from one Galway survivor states that she still suffers nightmares 50 years on. Another eyewitness states that a nun used, to, uh, used a strap to beat a woman who was depressed and couldn't work until she was hysterical. There are plenty of examples of emotional and physical abuse, of, secu of seclusion, of humiliation of women. The excellent work carried out by the Justice for Magdalens not only catalogues these experiences and the aftermath, but also sets out a historical account of the laundries and notes how a frenzied public morality combined with a dominant religious force and an indifferent government to transform 19th century re re refuges into 20th century prisons and labour camps. Furthermore, despite the assertions of a previous government, the Justice for Magdalene's report demonstrates that the laundries were used by the courts as a place of so-called rehabilitation. The detrimental effects blighted the lives of the women affected long after they had left these institutions. Health problems, both physical and mental, relationship difficulties and marriage breakdowns, as well as strained relations with families and friends all arose out of the despicable system. And yet what's even more appalling is the fact that some women were con condemned to live out their entire lives in these institutions. As a society, we must face the reality that the abuse which occurred at the Magdalene Laundries was in the public domain, just as the clerical abuse catalogued by the Murphy and Ryan reports was known to be happening. I also believe that the religious orders cannot be let off the hook in terms of providing financial support for their part in this abuse. The present government initiated the process when it established the Interdepartmental Committee chaired by Senator Martin McAleese. Regrettably, the conclusion of the committee's work has been delayed, which is perhaps inevitable as, of work, as its work includes a large number of, of stakeholders, as well as the identification and tracking of documents and records over several decades. But I am fully confident that the committee will provide a comprehensive account of the state's involvement in the Magdalene Laundry scandal and will promote further debate from which restorative action uh, will emerge. The survivors and their families are entitled to closure on their long campaign for justice, and I hope that this is forthcoming very, very soon.